everybody, and thanks for joining us for this next video series on AX2012. The topic we're going to be discussing next is usability. Uh, you'll notice that I'm hooked up to some earphones here and staring at a computer, and that's because uh, our next guest and our, our next speaker in this series, Kevin Honeyman, is based uh, not here in uh, Redmond, but in our Fargo offices. One of the great things about the AX2012 R&D team is that they are literally an around-the-world development team. We have developers uh, across the country in the United States and across the world who are developing this product. So uh, I'm pleased to be joined by Kevin uh, from our Fargo office, joining us by uh, Link and, and his webcam. Kevin, thanks for being with us here today. Yeah, thank you, Guy. Uh, I know we're going to talk about this, this issue of, uh, of usability, and that's a, a, you know, a pretty, pretty wide-ranging topic. And, uh, and as we get into it, though, I think it'd be great for the people viewing this uh, video and, and uh, the people tuning in for you just to give a little bit of background about what you do on the R&D team and what you're responsible for, and then we'll kind of launch into it. Sure. I'm Kevin Honeyman, um, user experience lead um, on the uh, Dynamics AX team. Um, my responsibilities are, you know, as well as my team, is to make the product as easy to use as possible. Um, so, so that was our focus. I, I, I'm a designer by trait. Um, we have user researchers on the team, so the, the teams of designers and researchers try to make the product as easy to use as possible. And, and the major theme for AX 2012 was, was simplicity and really trying to emphasize how we can simplify the product. So uh, on that topic specifically, we had a chance in a previous um, video to talk with Raj Dadia about that very topic of simplicity. And um, Raj and I spent a few minutes talking about the different types of, of ways that you guys have been able to do that in this product. And, and we spent our time um, together talking a little bit more about development uh, simplicity and, and admin simplicity. But I know just based on what you're responsible for in your team, you guys think a little bit more about the end user and uh, how we've tried to make that, simp that experience simple for them in AX2012. Yeah, that's correct. That, that was our major focus as we were focusing on the end user experience, um, kind of focusing on how people will navigate within the application, how they can find information, how we can enter information into the system, viewing it, um, as well as doing some of the configuration and, and, and security and, and that type of stuff as well, but primarily on the end user experience. So what, how, do you, how do you kind of approach that issue? I know a lot of people who are, are maybe new to AX2012 that are familiar with uh, you know, software and usability studies, how did you guys kind of approach that challenge in terms of how you wanted to address it in, in the product? It's a pretty broad topic. Uh, how, do you, how do you kind of dig in and say, here's some areas that we can make better or um, get that input? Well, there's a, there's a few things we did kind of prior to this release. Um, one of them was we ran a series of UX health studies. So what we did is we determined some of the key tasks that you perform within the application as an end user. And we went and recruited participants, people that um, have never used AX prior, and the people that were you know experts in their domain. So we recruited accounts payable clerks. We asked them to come in and, and go through some steps to pay their vendors, for example. Um, so we recruited these folks, we asked them to perform these tasks, we ran those usability studies, and then we, we tracked um, whether they were able to perform the task. We were tracking you know, the, the length of time it took to complete the task, and then their satisfaction level with that. And then based on those studies, we could then determine kind of where some of the challenges were within the application, and where people were struggling to, to use the application when, the, when you were a new user. So that was one of the things we did is kind of understanding what the new user's perspective of the application is when they first started using it. The second area we, we studied was kind of understanding what's working for existing users. So we went out in the field um, and we, we did a series of studies around the pr previous release of AX where we were actually watching people kind of grow up with the product. So we were watching people, um, we would go into their site, we would watch them, observe them work, um, we would come, go away, come back the next month, observe them again. We would do this for a series for approximately six months to kind of understand what's working for existing users um, as they're upgrading to the to the prior release. Um, and with that, you can kind of see issues such as you know, are they able to discover features that would make them more productive, mm. um, or are they struggling to find those features? Um, so, so that's the two ways that we kind of understood kind of what the problem space was before we kind of went into the, the design phase for the application. And, and I know that our uh, both existing customers who are thinking about upgrading as well as folks that are tuning in maybe to get an interest in, in wanting to learn more about the product are going to be really intrigued by the fact that we you guys spend so much time kind of getting that feedback. How does that translate into, you know, the work you do as an R&D team then? I mean, because, you know, in some cases you... 
you can reduce steps to pay a to pay a vendor, but you have to go through. There are certain things you definitely have to do, so you can't reduce it down to nothing. How do you how do you balance the need for a lot of rich functionality and and the cool things that we put in the product with this idea of usability and simplicity? And I think that's, that that was one of the one of the biggest challenges we have with an application such as Dynamics AX. It needs to support the needs of over sixty roles in five industries in thirty eight countries. Um, it, it needs to, to meet the needs of very complex businesses. Um, and, and the complexity of running a business seems to be growing um, with increased customer expectations, with increased regulations on these companies. So, so there's lots of um, inherent complexity in the things that we need to try to do. So, so our challenge is, um, is to simplify these core tasks. Um, so it's simple to perform those core tasks, but still have the ability to have more powerful capabilities um, available to us. So, so we coined the term powerfully simple was kind of the, the catchphrase we used to describe what we were trying to accomplish with Dynamics AX 2012. Um, we had to have it, we, we needed to make things simple, but we also needed to, to have that, the powerful capabilities. And the way we do that, you know, for example, is when we look at uh, entering a sales order um, and what it takes for entering a sales order, we look at what do the users do when they're entering a sales order? You know, majority of the time, 75% of the time, they're doing this. And so we focus the designs on what they're doing the majority of the time and make that as simple to use as possible. But then in more infrequent cases, we kind of make that a little bit more complex in the way you interact. That way, the simple cases remain simple and the more complex cases require a little more complexity um, so that was kind of our strategy of trying to design the, the system to be powerfully simple. That's excellent. Um, uh, why don't we switch to, and maybe you can show us uh, on the product itself, some of the ways that you guys uh, achieved that through, uh, through the work that your team did. Okay, let me switch over and share my desktop. So let me demonstrate how we uh, simplified the application. I'm in accounts receivable and I'm looking at the list of all of the customers. So for example, let's say I'm a person that's taking orders from a customer and I receive a call from someone at Sunset Wholesalers. I can quickly type in Sunset into this uh, quick filter area. I can hit return. It filters all of the customers down that have the word Sunset in it and I can find that I only have one. And what I've done, on, what we've done on this screen is we've, we've displayed a series of fact boxes along the right side. And this is to bring information to the user um, that they would typically go into. So we're, we've, we've studied the users, we've watched what they're looking for when they find a customer, and we discovered that oftentimes they're trying to find you know, their quotations, their sales orders, their addresses, some recent activity for them. So we've brought that information forward on these fact boxes that we have on the right side. Um, so again, we're trying to, to optimize for the, the, the typical case. Um, if they want to go in for additional information, they can navigate to that. So let me jump into sales orders and show you a, what a sales order looks like. You can see I drilled in on those two sales orders for that customer. Let me open one of those sales orders. We've substantially modified the transaction entry forms within AX2012. Um, and we've done this based on a lot of research uh, with our customers and our partners. One of the things that we heard very loud and clear was typically when you're entering sales orders, um, the information that's most important is the lines. Typically, you're defaulting the information for the header, so the, the lines is the most important piece of information. So what we've done is we've optimized the space on this form to show you as many lines as possible. You can expand the top region, and you can get some information about the header for that. And for a given line, you can expand the region at the bottom, and you can see additional details about the given line. But again, it's optimized for the typical case where they're coming in here to look at some line item information. Again, along the right, I can see fact boxes along this side. Um, so this is an example where, based on the research that we've done, um, we've under we understand what they typically are doing in these forms, um, and, and we're optimizing for that. Um, and they can get to more complex views. They can get to additional information on the, the header of that sales order, and there's a lot of additional information, but they typically don't go there. So we have this line view, which is kind of the, the, the typical case. You know, Kevin, one of the things I love about this, and I think those of us at Microsoft, we, we, we take the ribbon at the top of the screen really for granted because we've been using the Microsoft products for a while. But with so many people upgrading to new versions of Word and Excel and PowerPoint and the new versions of Office, 
this again, this, this simplicity and this usability is really going to carry through because this is going to be an environment that they are just familiar with using from the other products they use from Microsoft. Yeah, exactly. And that was one of the things we discovered when we were doing our usability studies with new users is the model that we used for displaying commands was just un was not what they would typically use. We had commands in, in menu bars, toolbars, and buttons along the right side. Um, so we, we, we did an effort to consolidate. So all of the commands are in a ribbon at the top of the screen, very similar to what you see within our Office applications, but, but organized in, in a different way. So we're organizing the commands based on activity. And, and this is a very interesting point is to simplify. So a user that's normally selling to a customer will have a sell tab, and they'll have all of these commands. Um, somebody that's just doing pick and pack may only have this tab, but I'm logged in as an administrator, so I see all of the all of the commands that are available. The average user, when they log in, will only see the commands that make sense to them based on their security level, and other these other areas would go away. So it's a kind of a, a, using the ribbon, but we're using it in a way that's very specific to us, organized by activity, and then trimmed based on our security settings. I think that's a great, that's, I mean, a, a very straightforward example, but one that, again, when you have a, the bulk of the users that are going to be using ERP for their department and their task, again, we want them to get in and out of the system and, and make the business decision, not have to hunt and, and look around and scroll uh, repeatedly to try to get to uh, the right part of the screen that, that they need to actually make the decision or perform the action. Yeah, and, and I think one other example I will give you, and I'm going to jump back to customers for a second, where we've simplified. I mean, the biggest challenge with simplification is, is the best way to simplify is remove things. The more features you have, the more complex your user interface is. Um, the reality is in our, our system, we have lots of features. We have lots of fields that make up an entity such as a customer. What we've done in, um, in AX 2012 is we've introduced this concept of fast tabs. So in this case here, I have expanding and collapsing regions that allow you to see information related to a customer. Um, what this gives us is, is a couple things. First of all, when you collapse all of them, you get a very concise summary of that customer. Um, you can see additional information over on the right side related to this customer. You can see they're in customer group 20. Um, you can see information related to credit and collections. You can see here that there's no, no hold on them. Their credit is good. Um, you can see information that they pay by a check. Um, they're on net 30 for terms of payment. So you can see all of this information at, at a glance. Um, if you want to, you can then expand all of these, and you can simply scroll through all of this information using the mouse wheel. So again, I can get to that more complex um, interaction if I want. I can collapse them all. I can individually open up a couple of these, and in this case here, let me open up sales demographics and credit and collections, and I can see both of those at the same time. And, and the other capability we have is you now have the ability to, instead of the go to main table, we have um, that same functionality is supported through a hyperlink. So I have a hyperlink here. If I hover over it, I will get some additional information about that. And if I click on it, it will take me to that form. Oh, cool. So it's a very powerful feature that looks very familiar to our customers. So Kevin, as, as we close up here, I'm, I'm interested, you mentioned that one of the things that you guys did early on was you know, really do a lot of these usability, usability studies. What's been the feedback of, of customers that have been in the, uh, the, the betas and the taps and, and the, you know, the early adopters of the program? What, have you seen this work pay off? Um, we have, and in fact, our, our TAP program has been extremely valuable for us. Um, the sales order screen that I showed you earlier was not the first design that we had. We implemented an, an alternate design. We got feedback from the, the TAP participants that they, that was not going to be as efficient as it could be. Um, we took that feedback, we made uh, adjustments to it, and we have a much better uh, sales order form than we did previously. So we got a lot of feedback from those folks. Um, at the same time, over the course of the release, we ran about 150 studies with about a thousand participants. So we've we've got a lot of data that, that backed up what we're doing here. Um, so we're pretty confident that we, we, we've nailed the design for this release. That's fantastic to hear it. And as someone who's played around with the product in, in, a, in very much an end user role, I can attest to the fact that for a, an ERP novice like myself, someone who doesn't spend a lot of time in ERP, that uh, you guys have achieved a lot of your goals. So thanks a lot for your time today. And, and we're looking forward to the release of the product in the next few months. Thanks again. Thank you.